Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at Quiz 1 for Chapter 7, which is on estimation. The first question on this quiz is, when we talk about estimation and statistics, what is it that's being estimated? And the choices are a sampling distribution, a population parameter, the values for missing data, or the degree of sampling bias. The answer in this case is a population parameter. I'll show you that in a second. But a sampling distribution is not something that's estimated. It's something that's used as a way of uh, getting the standard errors and, and, and the inferential procedures. The values for missing data, C, that's an important topic, but not something we're going to address in this course. And the degree of sampling bias, again, that has more to do with research methodology. In this particular case, when we talk about estimation, it's a population parameter. And you can see that when you look at the formula here. So this formula is trying to estimate the population mean. That's why we have that mu right there in the middle. And on the left side, this is the formula for confidence interval. On the left side, we have a sample mean minus a certain amount that's based on the standard error. And then on the right side, we have the sample mean plus a certain amount that's based on the standard error. And so that's what we're estimating. We're using the sample means to estimate the population mean. Number two, what's one important difference between a point estimate and a confidence interval? Uh, the choices here are rather long. The confidence interval gives two numbers instead of one. The point estimate is based on sample data instead of population data. C, the confidence interval is used only for unbiased statistics instead of biased ones. Or D, the point estimate cannot be used for inferring population values. The answer to this one is A, the confidence interval gives two numbers instead of one. I'll show you in a second, but let me address these other issues. The point estimate is based on sample data instead of population data. Well, uh, they're both point estimates and confidence intervals are based on sample data. Um, now, it's true that we are using a population standard deviation in this particular version of the confidence interval, but it's an unusual thing, and it doesn't work into the point estimate at all. The confidence interval is used only for unbiased statistics instead of biased ones. Well, you want to have unbiased statistics, but the you know the the formula doesn't care what you're dealing with. It'll use it either way. Um, and then this last idea, the point estimate cannot be used for inferring population values. Well, that's its purpose. That's exactly what it's made for. Um, anyhow, so let's take a look at a. This just gives you an example of a confidence interval. The thing we're estimating is right there in the middle. It's mu, the population mean. And you see that we have a lower bound for the estimate and an upper bound for the estimate. Those are based on our levels of confidence and the sample means and the standard error. But it's two numbers. A point estimate would be just the sample mean as a stand-in for the population mean. Number three, how is a point estimate affected when the sample size increases? So it becomes lower, it does not change, it becomes higher or it becomes narrower. Well, a point estimate doesn't change according to the sample size, so it's B. It just, you know, it's it's an infinitely narrow little thing and it just stays right where it is. Uh, it doesn't become lower, that doesn't affect it at all. It doesn't become higher, that's irrelevant. And it doesn't become narrower. That's something that happens to confidence intervals as the sample size increases because it shrinks the standard error, but it has no effect on the point estimate. And you can see, Here's the formula. There's nothing to it. N doesn't work into this. And so it doesn't change. All right, number four. Imagine a sample with N equals 25, so a sample of 25, and a mean of 55 that comes from a population with a standard deviation of 10. Based on these data, what would be the 95% confidence interval for the population mean? Now, um, because we're using uh, the standard normal distribution for means, we can just use the z-score of 1.96, and that gives us a plus, uh, sort of, excuse me, 95% of the normal distribution is between minus 1.96 and, and positive 1.96 standard deviations. Anyhow, the choices are 54.22 and 54.78, or 53.00 and 57.00, uh, or C, 53.04 and 5696, or D, 5108 and 5892. Well, this one involves a fair amount of calculation, so I'm going to break it down for you. But the answer is this last one. Let's see how we get there. First, it's helpful to write down what the actual parameters of the, the factors are that you're dealing with. So we want a 95% confidence interval. That's the CI on the left for confidence interval. We have a sample mean, x bar of 55, we have a sample size of 25, and we have a population standard deviation of 10 uh, for this particular form that we're using. 
the first thing you need to do is get the standard error. And so we have the standard error, that sigma sub x bar, is equal to sigma, the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size, n. And so that gives us 10 over the square root of 25 is 10 over 5 and uh, is 2. So that's the standard errors. It's two points. Then what we do is we take that standard error and we take the sample means and we put them into a large equation. Again, it's similar on the left and on the right, just on the left you're subtracting a fair amount and on the right you're adding a fair amount. Now when we plug in the numbers, here's what we get. The sample mean is 55, so we put that in on both sides. We're doing a 95% confidence interval, so we use a z-score of 1.96, uh, minus on the left plus on the right. And then uh, that z-score is multiplied by the standard error, which is 2 on both sides. Do the multiplication, you get 55 minus 3.92, on the left and 55 plus 3.2 on the right and uh, do the addition subtraction you get 51.08 and 58.92 and what it is is these forms these uh, scores form the boundaries for the 95 percent confidence interval that is um, the idea that 95 percent of the uh, confidence intervals from samples of this size drawn from the random population will uh, cover the population value. It's it's a little complicated, but that's the idea. Okay, last question in quiz one. Imagine that two samples, sample A with an n of what of uh, with an n of twenty and sample B with an n of two hundred, are drawn from the same population and confidence intervals and are computed. Um, and confidence intervals are computed for the same variables. So the only thing that's different is the sample sizes, 20 in one case, 200 in the other. And which sample will have the narrower confidence interval? The choices are sample B, sample A, or they'll be the same, or that you can't answer it without additional information. Well, the answer is B. Um, and the reason for that is because it has a larger uh, sample. Larger sample is narrow interval. I'll show you in a second. Um, a would be the opposite, and they're not the same, and you have enough information to answer them. Uh, you may recall seeing this graph before. It shows confidence intervals around uh, something called a correlation coefficient, which is why they're asymmetrical, but the, the idea is still the same. You have a confidence interval there on the left, far left, based on a sample size of 10. And it's really wide. It's almost the uh, full range. And then you see they get smaller, smaller, smaller until we get up to 800, where it's a really narrow one. Um, there is a point of diminishing returns where adding more people doesn't make much of a difference, but still, adding people, because that goes into the standard error, does reduce the standard error, which in turn reduces the width of the confidence interval. And that's it for quiz one.